Story 1. Hi everyone. Been lurking and digesting info and I must say everyone on here is so supportive and generous with their thoughts and guidance. So, here's my story. Hopefully it makes sense and avoids any ramblings. But I'm aware it might be fragmented due to how the it came to light. I recently found out that my partner of 16 years and mother of our 6-year-old son has been having an affair who I was sadly still very much in love with. I'm very lost at present and just taking each day as it comes, but I'm relatively high functioning under stress and anxiety and able to put on a brave face. I've lost over 20 pounds in weight and cannot sleep. Over the last month I've been constantly wondering how this happened and it has knocked me for 6 or 6 million. I started I see today which has improved my mood somewhat though and was very cathartic to talk to someone and have them listen to my ruminating. I left my WP once I found out on day the 3rd of January. This was more of admittance than any form of disclosure, she wouldn't give me any details. I moved to my parents for two weeks as I didn't want her to see the trauma I was in. But for the last two weeks I've moved back into the family home as need to be closer to home for work and my son. WP has moved into her parents, although she is using the family home to remote work whilst I'm out at work. The last 12 months of our relationship weren't the same as the preceding 15 years that I accept. Second lockdown was tough, she's an extrovert and hated being locked up. Lack of intimacy between us crept in but relationship was never toxic or bad. We have always had laughter and happiness even recently around ex mass common interests, but equally individual hobbies. I was never controlling or unloving and always supportive, kind, and generous. But clearly a bit of boredom and monotony had occurred think I forgot how to communicate my love to her in the way she wanted and looking back got stuck in the mundane, everyday cycle of life, work, chores, childcare, watch TV for a bit, fall asleep, bed, rinse and repeat. Since lockdown lifted in 2021, I'm in the UK, my partner started frequently going out with friends more etch but wanted to give her the freedom to do her own thing. In my head it was I love you so much I will sacrifice my own pleasure so she could have hers, especially after the restrictions of the second lockdown and her being an extrovert, needing to see her friends. I was also by my partner assigned the role of chief babysitter during these frequent jaunts. I love spending time with my son. I'm much more a hands-on dad than she is mum. Since day I've realized this was the affair taking shape and she wasn't with her friends, but I didn't notice at the time and not until around Xmas, Trust and fidelity are a core value of mine, which she knew it had been communicated. Therefore, I never contemplated this would ever be the cause of our relationship to end. Gosh the lies that this took, messaging and calling me whilst on weekends away with him, discussing the meals, restaurants and activities that they had undertaken, under the cover of being with her female friends, showing me videos and sending me pictures of the places visited. She even chose walks to go on as a family to the same place she had been with AP the day before. She got sloppy though and left receipts of gifts she'd bought the AP for Xmas under the bed and also posted a picture of herself on SM wearing a hat and rucksack he'd bought her for Xmas. <clears throat> Not to mention birth control pills, but we hadn't been intimating for some time so she also must have been having unprotected SX. Erg. Back in time. I broke down in tears and had a panic attack in the autumn, November 16th to be precise due to noticing the change in our bond and opened that my heart was breaking, due to fear of losing her after an unusually nasty argument and wanting to fight to regain the relationship we once knew. We had a long conversation and we seemed to move forward. We agreed that it showed we both cared, although she stressed, she still needed her space, and she didn't want me to smoother her. But alas it was too late she continued the A. My biggest regret is that I enabled her taking advantage of me, keeping me at home with our son whilst they pursued one another. Secondly, I just cannot fathom why after 15 and a bit wonderfully happy years and less than one tough one she just jumped ship on our family without even talking about any problems she may have had within our relationship to try to rectify them. That one hurts the deepest. She's now only contacting me regarding childcare arrangements. When I first left after day, she messaged me saying she missed me so much. She also called me about three days later saying the usual sorry I hurt you. He was someone who showed her a bit of attention. L-Y-B-N-I-L-W-Y, that she took me for granted. I'll never trust her again. Didn't think we could get back to how it was. Her head's been turned. She feels so ashamed. She's been living in a bubble and she needs to be on her own for a while. Since then, nothing but silence other than childcare arrangements. What she isn't aware is that I have found out who the AP is, and she doesn't know I know. He's the same age as the both of us 39 but never been in a long-term relationship. If he was such a good guy because couldn't he find a single lady? had to go for the one with a family. 
he doesn't have any commitments and is therefore readily available unlike me who is caring for his family or now just child. They seem to have sparked a friendship through cycling and triathlon. He's even liked historical pictures of my son on her SM, like he's just wanting to take my family. Absolute rage at this. The few times that I've seen her since day when we have crossed paths at the house. I just don't recognize her within four weeks. She seems like a stranger. This might be just me but I'm really starting to think she might be having a midlife crisis. And at some point, she's either going to implode and see the damage she done or that it's gone so far. She can't turn back. The only people by which point that will have suffered is my son and me. I get physically nauseous when I think that ultimately this AP may get to be a part of my son's life and pass on his clearly warped character and moral compass onto him. Although his mother clearly has many flaws that I now see clear as day. As she has continued the relationship with her AP since the split, it's clear where her priorities now sit. And the relationship clearly didn't mean enough to want to save it. She's betrayed me by having the A, continuing it after November's heart to heart and then seeming choosing him over me on day. Sadly, and this is the saddest part, I'm still in the hoping phase that she comes to her senses and want R and I cannot shift that feeling, even though in my gut I know it's folly. I also categorically refuse to play the pick me dance. She hasn't told anyone about the other than her mom and sister. Her father would be mortified as he caught his own mother having affair whilst in his teens. I think she's now transferred the lies to them to continue the a when our son is with me. She's not acting like a normal adult as when she has our son it will be grandma who does all the chores, and she will be getting weighted on hand and foot. Again, midlife crisis, like she's reverting to a teenager. I think now she is pretending the a is over so that she can in the future bring him in as a new partner, so he won't be seen as the home reeker. Sorry to ramble, but I just don't know what to do. Should I calmly confront her and ask for clarity, and then I know who the AP is? Should I contact her mother? Should I just move on? What I can say for certain is I'm focusing my efforts now though on healing myself and taking care of my son. I really need to sort the sleep out though, but really don't want to go down the medication route. I'm doing breathing techniques, mindfulness, walking and exercising when I can. These all help in different ways, but nothing seems to calm my mind when I go to bed. Many thanks to all those that take the time to read. Many thanks everyone for the advice and counsel. To clarify we're not married. Both atheists therefore we didn't feel the need to marry. We both earn equally and split the house bills equally, but one big issue is the house is solely in her name, which causes me stress as might not have a leg to stand on when it eventually comes to selling up. Thanks again, big love to all X. Hi quick update, son was with me last night and she arrived on cue this morning at 7 to take over, so was clearly upset when I said won't see him now until Friday. She ignored it really, asked if I'm okay, I said no, to which she replied simply oh okay. I simply left complete lack of any emotion towards me or son. Thanks all for the wise words and guidance. I have a week's annual leave starting the 18th of February and will find alternative place to live. We'll rent initially. Once I have my own space we'll then look to discuss with WP sale of property or buying me out of my share of the equity. I'm following the 180 now, focusing on me and my son. Exercise, walking, seeing family and friends, doing yoga, having I see and just generally being kind to myself. She is now getting NC from me other than childcare arrangements. Need to stop thinking about her now, but it's hard. Once I do that healing will be easier. So sad that I haven't seen my son since Friday but have him four days this week thanks again and I'm thinking of everyone here that's having to deal with this crap. We deserve better. Hi everyone, just a hopefully short update, 10 weeks after day. So, I've got my SHT together, got the evidence to show that I contributed equally to household finances as the mortgage is solely in her name. So, protecting myself financially for myself and son in the future as best I can. I'm currently still in the family home with WP at her parents, a PS house. I'm actively looking to find rental accommodation a SAP but needs to be affordable, and within reasonable distance to son's school to co-parent, but it's surprisingly hard to find somewhere that fits all the criteria. Once this is sorted detachment should be complete. I'm in full on 180 now. And see other than communication regarding childcare. I'm seeing friends and socializing. Joined a running club and hiking group. Picked up my golf clubs and started playing again for the first time in years. Journaling and doing I see which has helped a lot in understanding how I'm feeling and why. But also how to deal with it. Basically, doing anything and everything to heal and feel good about myself. Overall, I feel like I'm in a safe place mentally and physically. Don't get me wrong the pain is still there, but I'm dealing with it positively and letting the bad moments and days come and go. 
cherishing every second of happiness that comes along however brief. Thank you to everyone who has ever posted on C with advice or information that I have used, taken on board to help me get through the initial trauma and the most horrific experience of my life. You are all amazing and keep striving for peace and contentment despite the cards we've been dealt but didn't want or certainly deserve. Big love to all and I hope everyone has a bit of happiness today. Comment, have you filed yet? Original poster, we weren't married so no issue re-divorce. Financial issue was house in her name. But I've sought legal advice to prove my contribution to the mortgage payments etc. And have bank statements as evidence. So should be okay if I need to prove it in court. Story 2. My wife broke it to me over Thanksgiving that she has found another man. And it's a co-worker. It's been 5 months of me trying anything and everything to try to keep it together. My wife has just increased the lies and deceit as time has gone on. There is so much to the story, but I don't even know how to tell it. She packed a bag six days ago and hasn't come home since, but I'll get random phone calls and texts but tons of gaps where she starts ignoring me. But when she does talk, she makes it sound like there is still a chance but only the slightest. No one I know understands what it's like to be married to someone who is doing this. I still love her and would do anything to keep the marriage together. I'm in my late 20s my wife is my same age. Been married over 6 years and together even longer. No children and this are the first time anything close to this has happened. I know I'm playing the pick-me game, but it feels instinctual. I know it isn't my wife doing this anymore, but I know she is out there somewhere. Couples recover from this and I'm trying everything I can. Except of course the right things. I want to thank everyone who posted support for me here. I have to admit it hurt like hell to hear unanimously to move on. I couldn't bear to keep reading the posts. I am going to slowly try to get help. I have already started medication and am starting therapy soon. I still have no idea how I am going to get through this but I'm going to try one day at a time. I'm curious as to how your wife just up and left Blue Jessen's 42. That is just cold. I have battled with depression for a long time and was in a bad spot living so far away from family and friends. We moved out away from where we were from four years ago, nearly three years into marriage. So, I was in a rough spot, and she claimed she got lonely and sad, and I didn't notice and a co-worker of hers did. It was like a switch went off and everything she had felt for me had disappeared. This completely blindsided me. We lived together for another six months, and I took a job back near family. So at least I'm back by some sort of a support group. It's tough since life doesn't stop for this and everyone else has life happening too so there is far too much alone time right now and I'm not handling it well at all. I started the book but haven't finished it yet. Still trying to find strength in all the advice here. I wake up each morning in tears to the empty spot in bed next to me and want nothing more than to reach out to someone. Mainly my wife. No matter how ugly she is being, I can't seem to shake the feelings I have for her. Yes, I'm beyond mad and the times I imagine her in bed with the AP I want to scream. I come from a fairly religious background and I'm sure some people will disagree with religion, but I ask for understanding. My wife being even more religious than I makes the betrayal sting even more, especially since the AP has no part in religion. Don't let this section take over the thread I am just venting. I am not able to do so in a way I want to anymore. I have a dog that I have kept in the separation. He helps a ton, but I worry about him because he has slowed down on eating and I'm struggling to give him the attention he needs. I move from having three acres for him to run around onto an apartment. Comment. Hey, you probably feel like you've been bombarded with advice and suggestions. It may be too much at this point though we all mean well. How are things going for you? Have you made any changes or have you done anything that you feel has helped you? Original poster, I would say things are still pretty horrible. However, I have been attempting to do things to help me. I reached out to an old friend and I'm going to get into rock climbing with that person. I have a regular meeting with a counselor, but my one visit so far was uneventful. The only thing that has done a lot to raise my spirit is that I know my wife attended therapy yesterday. Although, I am also pretty sure she has also moved in with her AP at the same time. I started reading a book on abandonment as was recommended previously. It has been right so far about the feelings I have been going through. Overall, I'm still self-destructing but I am trying my hardest to forge my own path. I appreciate your concern and checking in on me. Right now that is what I have been craving the most is someone to talk to about the situation that isn't just telling me to get over it. Even when I know that is what must be done. Today is one of those days that is insanely overwhelming. I almost tried calling the AP to give him a piece of my mind, but the universe stopped me because his number disappeared from the area. I kept it when I blocked him. I knew it wasn't a good idea to do it in the first place, but nothing was going to stop me except, well, 
not having the number. None of this is easy and I find myself every night getting home to an empty apartment and instantly fall into overwhelming sadness just desperate to talk to someone. I send out random messages to see if I get any bites but never seems to work. So here I am venting on the internet. I am beyond angry knowing that my wayward wife moved back to the state we just left to get back to the AP. And here I am not getting over it. I know I need to move on and honestly, I am trying but it's getting more difficult as time goes on. I understand that everyone is coming at this from experience and good advice. I also understand I am being a hopeless romantic thinking things will go back to normal and we can be happy again. I am trying to learn to move on. I've been taking up hobbies and meeting up with old friends and family. I'm still a mess and trying my best. Divorce papers have been served to me and I am at a loss. I'm disgusted in how division of assets look considering we both worked full time and she has a higher level of education than me. She just picked a job that paid much less than I did. There is a lot of anger happening right now and coping with everything is extremely difficult. I'm going to work on switching therapists to see if I just don't have the right one. Anyone in a situation like this have any advice? Or is it because I am a guy and I made more money I just have to take what I can get and move on? I don't understand how any of it is fair when she is living with someone else and has two incomes. She has already taken a check from her half of the house and is using it to buy her and her AP a house since he only has a trailer home. Trying my hardest to find a lawyer who will put up a fight. I keep getting told that more than likely things just get split down the middle. Story 3 I would like to thank everyone in this forum. This site has been my source of sanity during the last few weeks of pain and madness. It took about 16 days before I was able to get more than 3 hours of sleep. Emotions are up and down and pain I've never felt before. I have been absorbing everything I can. The perspective, hurt, excuses, etc. Married 28 years. Two kids. Day December 20th, 2021. I was in my office and heard my wife in the kitchen whispering which I thought was odd. I walked quietly and noticed a tone I've not heard her use before outside of us. A tone of care, softness, and closeness. When I approached, she had a shocked look and when I asked her who she was talking to, I heard a male voice on the other line. She quickly shut off her phone and showed me who it was. It was a fake contact of her female friend. She quickly got defensive with lies and informed me that it was a room she was interested in for rent because she wants a divorce. I was in shock because I knew we were having issues, but this was quite a bomb. The gas lighting was brutal and her constant blame shift was evident. I was able to get the phone records and confronted her about their initial text on November 19th which escalated to more texts, calls. She did this while I was at work, sleeping or taking kid to activities. She admitted it was wrong to have an E and would like to work on our issues with MC. I asked her one last time for full transparency and she said it was an E through text, calls. She sees AP at work maybe once a week. She's 47 he's 31. I asked her one last time if she has seen him outside of work and she said no. Things started to calm down a little including a significant drop in my cortisol levels on December 27th. But my instincts were still going off. So, I accessed her Google timeline and everything looks normal. But as I zoomed out, I noticed one little dot east of the map. I looked up the address and cross-referenced it with intaglios and the number matched the AP. So, I confronted her again about her lies and showed her Google timeline images and she finally admitted the one-time physical affair on December 10th. We are currently just calming ourselves for the kids, but I'm devastated and look at this person who I thought was my friend as this devious evil human being. We were separated 13 years ago and dated other people, but after working it out and deciding on our second child, we agreed to be with each other only and if we want to be with someone else, prior to cheating, we will separate. She said she was done without relationship, and this was sort of her last act. She admits now that it was the wrong path, but at the time, she said it was nice to be with someone without all the negative issues. But now, she wants to try and work it out. She said a last attempt in saving us. It's confusing at times and my heart and brain are in constant battle as to what to do. I feel like taking her back enables here since there's zero consequence. At the same time, before this, we are great together. I'm going to have my first trauma I see this afternoon. I'm trying to figure out what path to take. There's so much more to write, but even just typing this makes me feel a lot lighter because I'm sharing something with those who knows what I'm feeling. Thank you. Comment. She wants to try and work it out. She said a last attempt in saving us. This is one of the most common lies that cheaters say, and don't be surprised that the A is still ongoing. What your WW is doing is to give you hope. Hope that you can go back to normal. 
This will make you smoke the opium pipe and ignore the other red flags that will be waving in the background still glued to phone, still staying on at her job, and you might get a bit of nookie, until she willingly gives up the basic things to even consider a chance at R. Privacy handwritten timeline 100% NC with the AP. You will not even be able to start on your journey out of infidelity. Original poster, thank you everyone. I appreciate your responses. Lots to think through here. I really like approach with some modifications. I do know that she has ended it. And she's mostly out of limerence, fog. But she's still blame shifting a little bit. Justifying that she wanted to exit anyway so her actions didn't matter. She seems torn if the better approach is to just divorce and or work on the marriage. She wants to keep the family but seems unhappy. I'm on the fence as well. I did have a great session with my IC yesterday. It sounds like there's a lot of what she calls delusional remorse and compulsive infidelity. I'm trying to ride the weekend and since it's my son's bay, I don't want him impacted with all of this. Not sure what to do since we are both 50 over 50. The sad part is that I'm questioning everything the last 6 years now because she did have some odd behavior that almost mimics the recent events. But I was too busy to notice. We'll think on it some more and see if we can be fixed or if I even want to try. Either way, no happy ending here. She has been transparent. The issue right now is she's looking for another job. She needs this position because it's for a specific specialty, and quitting without a similar position would set her back immensely on her career path. She is looking for another job that I can see. She also told me this person is on rotation, so they only see each other once every week or so and it's a very open setting due to the nature of her position. I did verify this because I have a friend that works in a similar position. They haven't seen each other since day that I am sure of. Their last conversation was on December 25th when she broke it off that night. Honestly at this point if she does talk to him, I almost welcome it so that my decision will be easier.